Alright, so... Oh. Crazy. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna talk about uh, how God is always with us, and I'm gonna start out with a couple of scriptures. Out of Proverbs. Five and six. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And I'm going to go down to verse 12. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the Father, the Son, in whom he delighteth. So, he's telling us here, you know, to trust in Him. But just because we trust in Him don't mean that we're not going to have storms and struggles. And uh, over the past couple of years, you know, we've, we've had a few here and there. Uh, on uh, January 7th, 2018, it was on a Sunday morning, I woke up and uh, I laid in the bed for a little while, which is, you know, that ain't, that ain't real normal for me. I normally get up all that. Well, Kelly Joe, she kept wanting to get up, you know, because she's my bed partner. So, she, uh, she kept wanting to get up, want some cookies. And I said, all right, that's why I get up. So I got up and I fell up against the wall on my right side. And I was like, <clears throat> Something, something just don't feel right, you know. And I couldn't see nothing because I didn't have my contacts in. So I got the couch on my right side and went to the bathroom. And uh, I finally got my contact in, my right contact. Finally got it in. And I went there and told Allison, I said, hey, I said, uh, something don't feel right. I said, I'm not hurting, you know, or nothing like that. But I just, I don't feel right. Well, she started looking at me. And uh, she started smiling because I was looking cross-eyed. <laughs> so, but she started smiling, I started smiling, and she stopped. And I said, oh boy, so so made right. Well, the right side of my face wasn't moving, you know. And hey, about 20 minutes later, I don't know how many people said hi. They was everywhere. So, they put me in the put me in the ambulance, took me to Cordell, and they had, before I got out, they had a, uh, like, iPad, you know, to sign, for whatever reason, I can't remember what it's for. Well, I write with my right hand, you know, and I tried, I knew, I knew how to do it, and I knew what I wanted to sign, but I couldn't make my hand work for nothing. I, I don't know. See, anyhow, the lady, she just got and drew a line, and they took me on in there. And uh, later that night, my my vision, if I look in one spot, it was, well, I don't know if I said this before, but when my eyes was crossed, I was seeing double. I'd see one here and then one right above it. Well, that night, if I focus on a certain spot, then they could, they would get back to normal again, you know. And uh, I started, started walking while I, you know, keep my balance and stuff. And uh, the next day, everything was back to normal. You know, my eyes was good, and I was walking, and everything. And, uh, at this point, uh, I don't know. I don't know who all know knew that they was thinking I had a stroke. You know, I didn't. They wouldn't tell me anything. But because uh, as far as I was concerned, I had never been in the hospital that I really remember. And I don't like being there, especially, especially Cord Hill. So, uh, anyhow, what just so happened that night, the uh, Georgia and Alabama game was coming on the national championship. And I kept telling the doctor, I said, hey, I, 
or kept telling the nurses, I said, hey, y'all got, to, y'all got to get the doctor to come in here because I, you know, I want to go home and watch the game. And finally, you know, he let me go and all that stuff, and they checked me out, said everything was good. Luckily, I went to Atlanta, and they found a hole in my heart. And they went in and fixed that, and everything's been fine, you know, since then. But having said that, I know a lot of people that's had strokes and stuff that wasn't that uh, fortunate, I guess you would say. So that's the uh, that's one one thing that that got our attention. And uh, the next couple, I'm gonna get off of me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put on Allison. Uh, it was, I think it was 19, the Christmas party here uh, in 2019. We had watched the Christmas play and went to the back. And she told me, she said, hey, she said, I don't, she said, I got a headache. I don't feel good. She said, something ain't right. And she kept on, you know, feeling worse and worse. And uh, so I took her back to Port Hill. And by the time I got there, I had to get a, I had to get a, uh, a wheelchair to get her in the ER because she didn't think she could walk. And uh, we got her in there, got her in the ER. Hey, within three or four hours, she couldn't move her, nothing. She could move her head, but anything else, if she wanted to turn over, I had to physically grab her and turn her over. And every time, I mean, she couldn't do anything. Well, that was. I don't, I don't know, three or four days maybe. When we finally got them talked out of getting us out of Coral Deal, because we just sat there for three or four days, you know, didn't do anything. So we went to Macon, and they took her to Macon uh, by the ambulance, you know, and I followed them. And when I was finally got there and started going down the, the hallway, um, it looked kind of like a scene out of a bad movie, you know, because it was an old hospital and everything was just kind of, it just kind of running down, you know. I mean, not talking bad about Macon because the, the service was awesome. It was just, when we first got there, hey, it, it didn't look too good. Well, when I got there, she had probably been there 30, 45 minutes maybe. And uh, on the side of the bed, you know, they had the, they have the little thing where you can call for help and let the bed up and down all that stuff. Well, they had a thing that was fixed to it that she could turn her head and blow into it to call her nurses because she couldn't move, you know, still. So anyhow, um, the next day the physical therapist came in, probably about 11 or 12, and worked with her. And she told us based on her observation that, uh, Allison would have to go to rehab for six to eight months. Before she could use her limbs and all again, hopefully. You know, she wasn't even sure that she would ever be back in normal. Well, that afternoon, about five o'clock or so, she, uh, we were sitting there, and she, she reached up and scratched her nose. Well, we didn't think nothing about it until after it happened. And then we said, oh man, you know, that's that's a big deal. You know, it's crazy. You go scratch your nose, it's a big deal. Well, when she did that, well, we went we wasn't working on everything else. You know, trying to, you know, I guess me and her became physical therapists then and it's got a, you know, because she wasn't in there at the time. The physical therapist wasn't in there at the time. So that went on for a little bit, and she told me she was hungry, which is the first time she's been hungry since that night, you know, when we were seated. <clears throat> so I went down there and got a coat and a bag of chips and honey bun and whatever she wanted, you know. And by the time I got back, she was moving both arms, you know. Well, later on that night, she started moving her, se- her legs a little bit to kind of pick them up, you know, and let them back down real easy. And then she set herself up on the side of her bed. And we was, I mean, we was ecstatic, you know. And uh, so the next day, the uh, 
doctors came in, her a neurologist, I think, come in, and then the physical therapist come back in. And hey, she she told her, she showed her everything she was doing, and she told her, she said, if you can um, if you can walk and and pass all the tests, hey, we, you can go home. So I think I think we went home that day, actually. And um, you know, we we talked to the neurologist in Atlanta, and. Uh, he said that he has heard of that before, but most times it's just one side. It's not your whole body like hers was. But um, the next the next door I got, I said this is for last because I I think this is about the best one. It's always stuck out in my mind, and I I wasn't even there. I had just left. Anyhow, Allison was sick for about two to three months around Thanksgiving. And uh, Thanksgiving, on into Christmas, after the first of the year too, I think. And this was before we had any kids. And uh, <clears throat> she was down there in Tiffany. And uh, I had went down there so Suzanne could come back and get her stuff and do some stuff she needed to do around the house. And uh, then when she come back, I, I left. Well, you know, since Allison had been sick, She's been having these dreams about uh, somebody in an orange hoodie, you know, and he would be like, like she would wake up and he'd be just standing inside the bed looking at, her, looking at her, you know, and you couldn't see nothing because the face was black, you know, and uh, but he had his hoodie pulled up, and uh, anyhow, I think it was. I think it was three or four different dreams. Most of them he was looking at her. One time he had the blinds, you know, he was looking out the blinds, you know, and it, hey, it scared us, you know, and we didn't know what was going on, you know, didn't know what was going on with Allison, none of that stuff. So, um, one night, a lady came in to do blood work, you know, when she was, she was singing and humming and all kind of healing and stuff like that. Well, they got to talking, and uh, when she when she went to leave out of the room, she stopped like somebody was trying to talk to her, you know, and and she just kind of shook her head and took another step, and she stopped again. Now. This lady come in to do blood work, and uh, so she didn't know what was going on with Allison. Well, she pointed to her stomach, you know, and told her. She said, "Hey," she said, "Don't, don't worry about all this. This, this all be fine." And she told her. She said, "You're gonna have a beautiful baby girl." And. Uh, I kind of dismissed that, you know, because like, like I said, we didn't have Cal Joe or something. And uh, she said, and, and this was the thing, this was the thing that got me. She said, don't be afraid of those dreams you had if somebody watching over you. And nobody knew about these dreams except us, Mom and Daddy, and Daryl and Suzanne. And uh, anyhow, they took a gallbladder out, figured out that's what it was. And uh, took it out, and she got back home, and she had one last dream about that guy. And she said she was laying facing me, and it's like the guy was behind her, like trying to pull out of bed. And I guess that was it. You know, she hadn't had any more dreams, nothing like that about it. And then another thing is uh, when they was telling Allison Sand about it. She worked with Tiff Regional at the time. So she got the database and was looking for the lady's name and couldn't find a nowhere in there. And uh, in in December of 17, this is going to Ridge now. Uh, Ridge was two months old. Well we got we got sent to Scottish Wright for testing and to put feeding tube in. And while we was there he called RSV because RSV was horrible. Of everything work. 
Well, the uh, the pediatric doctor that worked on the, the respiratory floor and all that stuff came in about 10 o'clock at night. And uh, she was telling us how if you, you know, how the next couple of hours would probably go, you know, based on him being so small and his health problems and everything he's had so far. And uh, she told us that there was a good chance that he was going to go to a pediatric ICU and probably be placed on the den, you know, because most of the kids they were seeing was in bad shape, you know, as far as breathing and stuff. Well, we called everybody and asked them to start a prayer. And uh, the next, well, that night when they did that, they put him on very low oxygen. And they come in every four hours and did some treatments on him and all that stuff. And by the morning, they took him off oxygen, took his IV out, and he was able to get his feeding to you know, put him in. And I mean, you had some kids up there that just been, had they been sick with that stuff for a week or so, you know. And, um, but I got, I got a couple more verses I'm gonna read. This is coming out of Isaiah 43. But now thus say the Lord that created thee, Jacob, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear, fear not, I have redeemed thee, and I have called thee by, by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, and thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. So, you know, I, I got to thinking about all that stuff. And uh, our, our storms that we go through, they may not always be for us. It may be meant for other people to see God's work through us. Amen. And uh, sometimes it's hard to think about it, that He is with us in the middle of a storm, but He's always there with us, you know, making us stronger. And hey, it don't matter if we're at work, our, all ours was in the hospital, but you don't have to be in the hospital. You could be in packaging. And uh, so, anyhow, just whenever, whenever you had hard times or whatever, just know that the Lord's with us and He'll help us out. Amen. Amen.